Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to A Beer with Brad, episode 11. I'm actually recording this on New Year's Eve. I just watched the ball drop on uh, the TV over there in New York City, and I'm going to spend this last hour here with you uh, recording Beer with Brad. Uh, tonight, I'm going to go over some of my favorite photos from 2021 and kind of look forward to 2022. But first, before we do that, let's talk about the beer. Tonight, I'm having the Imperial Coffee Walrus from Monolithic Brewing. Uh, Monolithic Brewing is one of the newer breweries here in Omaha. Really good. Everything I've had there so far has been great. Um, they have, this is a brown ale, an Imperial brown ale. They have a uh, Feisty Walrus, which is the regular brown ale, and then they came up with this Imperial Coffee version, which is um, just kind of the uh, in step up from that or improvement from that, but I don't, really, I don't know if improvement's the right word, but uh, I always like brown ales, especially when they're done well. They're really good, and it's a nice change of pace from all the IPAs out there. Now, don't worry, these are both IPAs, and I still love IPAs, but it's always nice to change something up and have a, something with a different flavor. So, uh, Imperial Coffee Walrus. It was interesting. I was at the grocery store yesterday looking at the beer aisle, and you know, they probably had, what, two, 300 beers there? And I'd say 98% of them were all IPAs. So many different IPAs out there. And I like IPAs just like everyone else, but it, sometimes it's almost to the point where it's like you can't even find other good beers anymore uh, without going to a brewery or going to really a, a specialty bottle shop because the market is just dominated by the IPAs. So I uh, thought today I would change it up and do something a little bit different than IPA. I think I've done IPA in a lot of the last beer with breads anyway, so uh, thought I would do this one. Um, Monolith, like I said, is a newer brewery. Uh, it's not too far from my work, so it's pretty easy to get to. They've been uh, doing road construction in front of the brewery basically since they opened it, feels like, so it's been a little harder to get there, but the, one of the owners told me that the road should be open any day now, which is awesome. Uh, from my work to the brewery, is like two miles, but with the road construction, it's probably four or five miles because you gotta go over a mile out of your way, west or east, and then come back around. So looking forward to that road being open, then I could grab some more crowlers and bring them home. Uh, I got, this is a Baby Brooklyn, which is a uh, one of their juicy uh, IPAs, and then the uh, Celestial Dreamer, which is a hazy IPA. So looking forward to trying both of those in the new. Hope everyone had a great holiday season. Uh, I'm sporting one of my Christmas presents right here. A nice camera shirt for my wife. So uh, It's been a crazy holiday season. It always flies by no matter what, but you know, with everything going on in the world right now, it's, it's even flying faster and it's been crazier and schedules are just out of whack. And I'm just kind of looking forward to the new year and hopefully things quiet down and slow down and, and get back to a little more uh, normal normalcy. So, uh, I haven't talked to everyone since the uh, beer with Brad, the, uh, the pop-up art fair at the Casual Pint last month, or earlier this month, however you want to look at it. Uh, it was a great time. Had lots of people stop by. It was cool meeting a lot of people, uh, a lot of people I've met before, but there were some new people I haven't met, and uh, it was just a fun afternoon. So glad everyone that got out and supported that. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the books for next year. Uh, the owner of the Casual Pint said uh, he... He's more willing to have me back, and I'm more willing to do it, so really looking forward to that. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into the, the photos, my favorite photos of the year. Now, I, I picked 24, which is crazy because I don't feel like I even got out and shot 24 times this year. I just feel like with everything going on, and I did a lot of work for clients and a lot of work for my my real full-time job and so the my photography like the freelance stuff or whatever you want to call it the fine art stuff um i just didn't feel like i did that much i mean it seemed like i really wanted to and maybe that's the thing is i want to do so much more of that i just feel like i'm not doing any but i picked i ended up with 24 photos i don't know that i'd call them all like portfolio pieces some of them i picked just because they had a special meaning to me or special memory or there was just something cool with the situation so um ended up with 24 and uh we get going here with, I'm gonna start, I think I did this last year when I did, it wasn't part of the Beer with Brad series because that didn't start till after the first of the year, but um, start actually on December 31st last year, which was the New York, New York, New Year's Eve fireworks in downtown Omaha. Um, it's always kind of a fun way to me that that's like the end of the holiday season as far as the Christmas and all that and the New Year's starting, get downtown and 
photograph the fireworks. So really like this. Uh, not too much different if, you know, maybe a little bit different location than I've shot in the past, but in the same general vicinity. Um, with fireworks, you kind of got to play the wind and you don't want to be downwind. You don't want that smoke blowing in your face. So there's not a lot of angles you can get, especially in, in you know December, January, where you either got a really strong north wind or a really strong south wind. So uh, this one up at the Gallup campus uh, really turned out. There's a lot of neat photos from that night. Uh, and I was going through this, picking out the, my favorite for the video tonight. And I don't know if this is my favorite because there's a lot of them I really like that night. But I didn't actually go out and photograph the fireworks this New Year's Eve. Um, wait, like I said, the, the, it's been a crazy year and the Christmas schedule got all, all kind of messed up with everything going on and so we actually had to celebrate Christmas Christmas Eve on New Year's Eve and Christmas Day we're actually going to celebrate tomorrow on New Year's Day so I did not photograph the fireworks tonight so it's kind of fun looking back through these um, made me miss them a little bit but you know they'll do it again next year and I hope as soon as they get the downtown Omaha Parks remodel, they'll uh, slide those fireworks right back down to where they used to be launched from closer to downtown and not up by the baseball stadium. So, New Year's Eve fireworks. The next one is on January 3rd. We had an awesome, really cool fog, hoar frost, and snow all kind of combined in one. So, uh, got in the car, got out north of town, and uh, found these two cool scenes. The first one is just a group of trees kind of fading off into the fog which is kind of neat and the heavy snow and then the second one was the one i really like and that just it's one of those pure luck you know it's two tire tracks disappearing into the fog and into the snow but you know they have that that perfect s curve and then they have like the the tracks disappear right at the horizon and the fog while there it was it was really good luck really good timing and you know, it's not something you can plan. It's one of those shots that you see and you just, you know it's a, you stop the car and get out and get set up and, and take that picture. So, a uh, really cool way to start the year with the frost and the fog. Uh, then on January 23rd, I photographed the uh, a, a UNO hockey game. And there was nothing really that special about the game um, other than it was the first sporting event I photographed since the beginning of the pandemic. So it was cool to get out, photograph that, uh, get out into the action again and, you know, see a live sporting event and take pictures. So that th it's one of these that, you know, the picture's nothing special, but the, the meaning is special. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, then on March 5th, uh, UNO opened up their new baseball stadium and I booked a helicopter and spent a half hour cruising around and uh, photographed the, the opening game. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, there was not a huge crowd there. We were still social distancing, still wearing masks, still kind of, um, I, I would say it's like a 25% capacity event. So uh, still cool to see. It's great that UNO has this perfect, beautiful baseball stadium right here in the middle of town. So uh, that's one of the, that's the reason that one made my uh, top of the 2021. And then after that, um, on March 18th, I did my very first Beer with Brad episode. And so it's hard to believe it's been almost a year, not quite, um, episode 11. So we got one more to finish out the first year. And it's it's been everything I hoped it would be and probably a little bit more. It's been fun. You know, when I started, I before I even recorded the first thing, I had the first three episodes completely planned out and I had an idea for one or two more. And now we're here 11 episodes in and I haven't run out of ideas yet. And, and, and some of that's thanks to the viewers, you know, suggesting ideas and uh, talking about things that um, are asking questions and work some of that in the video. So it's been great. Uh, can't wait to keep going with it. And then, uh, you know, work on start work on season two or year two. I'm not gonna call it season two, but year two here pretty soon. Uh, shortly after I did my very first beer with Brad episode, I went out on my annual Sandhill Crane photography trip. Now in 2020, that Sandhill Crane trip was literally like one of the last things I did before everything shut down. And it was already everything was kind of weird then, and it was kind of a weird trip. Went out one day. Um, kind of felt like a rushed trip and then just hurried back before everything kind of really shut down. And uh, and so this year going back out was kind of like a nice refreshing change. Actually went out there for three days um, and did something I haven't done out there 
um, other than the one I've stayed in the overnight crane blinds is I actually camped the whole trip so it was a, a decent spring the nights weren't too cold and uh, it worked out good and I kind of think this year unless you know I'll have to see what the weather does in, in March but might be camping again this year it just it worked out too good and uh, you know save money and you're closer to the, the cranes where you need to get up in the morning you don't have to drive all the way from town you're already kind of part of the way there so uh, this I this year I don't know that I got anything like really crazy portfolio worthy but you know it's just a nice nice time to get out and see the cranes again and get out of town is the first time I really got out again um, and and so just enjoyed being out in, in the nature and uh, this is just one of the one of the photos I took that day uh, the next photo comes from the end of March and this is a photo from the uh, old Crossroads Mall here in Omaha that is now completely gone. Uh, it's, it was the neighborhood mall when we were kids. Um, growing up, you know, we walked down there. Uh, it was probably the first mall I ever went to. And then, uh, so then this last year they started tearing it down. And I got kind of a neat shot where you're looking in. You can see the, the escalators coming down from the food court, but everything below the food court is torn out. And you can kind of see into the food court, but there's still signage there that's like perfect, perfect readable, you know, Target this way and Sears that way. And it just, it's kind of a neat picture. So again, not, not a portfolio piece, but just something that had special meaning to me. So that's why I included it in here. And then early April, I photographed the Broncos restaurant on Leavenworth. And I like Broncos. It's, it's a nice fast food, like kind of old school, throwback type fast food place. And so um, I've been watching, uh, Nick Carver does a lot of cool videos. Nick Carver's a great photographer. You can find his YouTube channel. He does, um, he photographs a lot of like retro or, you know, kind of old school throwback uh, businesses, buildings, stuff like that. Not, I'm not talking like 1900s brick. I'm talking like 60s and 70s kind of that retro look. So been watching his videos for a while and he's been doing a lot of really cool stuff and I'm thinking you know there's some buildings in Omaha like that that I really like and so one day I was driving down Leavenworth Street and I saw Broncos and I like Broncos and I was like that's a perfect one for me like I should get out and try you know a shot like that in the evening dusk and uh, did it love the photo put it on some social media pages and my photography pages and people really loved it I mean it really it really uh, got shared and it was well received. So it's kind of fun to see that the things, sometimes the things that I think are, I like that some people might think are weird. A lot of other people like them too. So fun doing that one. Uh, after that, went to the Sand Hills, which was kind of my first like longer, uh, further away photography trip. And if you haven't checked them out, there's videos from the whole Sand Hills trip on my YouTube channel. So you can see each day what I did. Um, First day I went, and uh, there was a really there was a lot of storms on the the whole day was pretty much you drive through a storm and then get sunny drive through a storm and get sunny, and then um, so this this photo was my probably my favorite from the whole trip. It was a trip to the Badlands, but my favorite photo from the trip came from the uh, Nebraska Sandhills, and it's just a it's a rainbow over a windmill out in the Sandhills, uh, black clouds still behind it. And it's been it's been a wildly popular photo. I mean, I got all kinds of orders for them after that, and uh, I printed out. I've taken it to art fairs. I actually got um, kind of a thing. I don't know if I should be talking about it yet, but there's a a group here in town that's actually going to use that and and get a lot of prints of that for gifts for people for an event coming up. So that's kind of fun. Um, so the first day was a lot of storms. Cool dynamic lighting. Um, I screwed up a lot. You'll watch, watch the video. I screwed up. I missed so many good shots because I was just running around like crazy. Uh, the second morning, woke up to great fog. So I got this awesome scene you see here. Um, lots of fog down the valleys. You know, cool fence line. Good sunrise colors. I uh, got the little yucca plants or whatever you want to call them in the in the foreground. Um, and then the next morning, while waiting for sunrise sitting there and all of a sudden a coyote popped up on the hill uh, to the right of me and it um, that was just a cool thing like I didn't expect it's one of those things like you didn't plan you didn't know you couldn't ever plan that because it's just a wild animal in a middle of a national park but sitting there a coyote popped up changed his lenses real fast got everything set up and I got a few shots of him before he walked down the ridge and then disappeared so 
And it was it was the only coyote I saw the entire trip, so kind of cool that way. Uh, I love when things like that happen. The unexpected photos, some of, them, some of those are always my favorite. Um, and then, oh, that's refreshing. Sorry about the little jump here in the video. Uh, fill up the memory card. It was bad habit. I, I won't delete any photos and videos off the memory card until I have everything over here backed up and have a giant memory card and it's full because I have a huge pile of aerial photos that I'm just this close to finishing processing and I, I don't have it backed up yet so don't want to delete anything off the card. So I was just going to say the next morning at the sand hills or no it was the same same morning as the coyote after the sun come up i hiked up you know, kind of searched around really wasn't finding a ton found a few different shots that were pretty interesting and i hiked way up this kind of hill in the middle between there's a road and then there was a really big rocks or bluffs or whatever you decide to call them, mountains dunes um so i hiked up this ridge and i got this really cool picture you see here um where the side lighting on all these little tiny peaks and triangles just made for, to me, a really interesting photo. I really liked it. It was one of my favorites from the trip. Uh, you might be able to see in this picture, but on the right side, you can actually see the road in the like four or five construction cones. So uh, I didn't realize it when I was taking it, and I really didn't realize it at first when I was processing the photo until I saw something I kind of zoomed in. I was like, well, those are construction cones, and that's the road. So kind of. Makes an interesting scale to it, but you know, if I printed it, I would probably go in and, and Photoshop out the cones. It's not something I normally do. I try not, I would just, in general, try not to photograph the scene with construction cones in it. But if I really liked the photo and I didn't see it when I was there, to me, it's kind of like one of those things like, all right, whatever, they're not. I'm not removing a critical element of the photo, uh, just maybe a minor distraction. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and then, the, the last night we were there, last um, night in the Badlands, went and uh, I found a scene I thought was pretty cool for sunset and I photographed it and it just, I don't know, didn't look like much. And then um, kept hiking around after the sun had set and then right at the, you know, in the blue hour when there's still the earth shadow with the pink, you know, the pink band at the horizon, I found this really cool scene here. And I really like it. It's probably kind of uh, a scene that I would have been uh, looking for you know, for the whole trip, you know, with the really deep erosion lines in it and, and the cool colors. And um, overall, the Badlands was a great trip. Uh, I would definitely go back there. Probably going to go back there probably sooner than later. It's not that far from here, from Omaha. So I uh, really enjoyed it. The next photo was a, uh, a rainbow over the cathedral here in Omaha, St. Cecilia's Cathedral. Uh, we had a storm come through and I saw the the sky on the western horizon was starting to clear up so i figured there's that's when you're gonna get your really cool dynamic lighting and went out took a few photos nothing spectacular and then i saw rainbow forward to the east and luckily i knew where to shoot the saint cecilia's from where i could get that rainbow and i uh, rushed there real quick and was able to get it with a minute or two to spare uh, luckily i was in the area already so it, it all worked out <clears throat> and then after that was um Aerial photos of the Caldwell series. Um, you know, I've photographed the Caldwell series almost every year inside the stadium since 2010. I've missed uh, one, and then 2000. I missed 2011, and then last year 2020 was the second time I ever missed it. Um, but after being gone, and or 2021, I missed it. I was not allowed in the stadium, but um, 2020 there was no Caldwell series, so technically missed three, however you want to say it. Uh, but I did get up in the helicopter and flew around and got some of my most favorite uh, pictures of the Caldwell series from the air. So it was fun. It's always great flying around that event. Um, just the action, the people, the way uh, the city all comes together for that. It's just, it's a fun and I got some good photos this year. After that, um, I was out, I was just, I think I wanted out. I don't even remember what the deal was, but uh, it was a full moon and I went up not too far from my house and I photographed the full moon coming up over the children's hospital. Now, when I initially set out to go photograph this full moon, I was hoping to get it coming up more by the skyline of Omaha or even the Bell Tower UNO, but where it came up, you know, I didn't have the the PhotoPills app that everyone uses. Um, 
So I just kind of guessed where it might come up, kind of based on where it was the night before from my neighborhood. And uh, I was off pretty far, but it was still cool. And then I was able to just move over a few feet and get it kind of going right above the brand new Children's Hospital, which was really cool. Um, put that on my social media, the Children's Hospital really liked it. So uh, I do that again. I'm not really big on like composing the moon in you know, like a, a scene, like you, you always see, like someone they'll find a statue with a guy like this, and they'll get the moon right above it, or they'll get the tallest building and set the moon on it, like it's a T. I've never really been into that. I like taking pictures of the moon, and I would like to get the moon. Like I got it with a, a windmill on the sand hills a few years ago. I love that picture, and to me, that was really cool. And I, I can't wait to get up to the sand hills at the right time and do that again. So, um, but being here in town. It was just one of those things where I wanted out, wanted to do something different. So uh, I tried the moon, uh, and it, it, it worked out. Um, I still might try it downtown Omaha sometime from out here. I think if I study the moon map a little bit more and get it on the right time of year, I can get it from where I was more over downtown. So, And I don't know that I want it bouncing. I don't think I want the moon bouncing on top of the tallest building. I just would like a really cool tight shot of downtown with the moon right there in it. Uh, be, be my preference. Uh, after that, um, you know, I'm going to throw in, I did, I did a few firework shows this year, not quite as many as I used to. And some of it was just because they weren't, some of them were canceled. And then, um, and some of the ones that did happen were on the same days as the other things. So I did a few uh, here. I included one from Warner Park. It's always fun to get to the Omaha Storm Chasers. They do great, uh, great fireworks shows. Uh, it's a great stadium, great team. Uh, and then after that, the Rockford Village fireworks, which was right up the street from my house. It was really super easy. There was actually a bad storm that night. Kind of blew through, and then it cleared off. And they had the they had a little concert and the fireworks. Um, I was trying to get the shopping center to let me photograph from somewhere else and they told me no and so then I just moved down you know in where the people watching the band were and it worked out good it was probably a better it was probably a way better photo than where I wanted them to let me go so sometimes uh, getting told no isn't always a bad thing you just move around and uh, use your judgment and find find a scene and like I've said in previous episodes you know the hunt is sometimes some of the, the most fun so it all worked out and I got some pretty good photos from Rockford that night and then um, Memorial Park photos I didn't the Memorial Park it's cool to get close to that show and you know it's a great event great you know it's have bands and huge crowds and great fireworks show but sometimes I just want to be way back from the from the event and so this is another one of those I photographed it from pretty close to my house about two miles away from the fireworks show on top of a hill looking straight into it and as you can see here it works out to be a photography wise a really cool photo probably uh, there are some things I could do up close that would be a neat photo but from far away this is a pretty cool photo uh, the next photo is um, one that you probably haven't seen yet because I've never posted it anywhere. I actually shot this for someone and uh, usually if I'm shooting something for someone I don't post it on my social media right away. Kind of let them deal with it and uh, have at it but I will post this soon. And it's this picture you see here of the uh, Bob Carey pedestrian bridge before it was vandalized. Um, now the top doesn't all line up and I heard it doesn't the two sides don't sync together very well but this was uh, when it was lit up for breast cancer month all in pink we had a nice sunset and our nice uh, not color sunset but uh, sky texture sunset so the blue hour was really cool had nice texture in the sky with the bridge so it worked out good uh, I'll, like I said I'll probably post that on my social media here soon um, the next one was a photo shoot for Midtown Crossing with the also at sunset and it was another night where you know, there wasn't a lot of color in the sky, but the clouds and the texture and everything worked out perfect. Midtown Crossing looked great. They lit everything up with the Christmas lights great. So it uh, came together. Midtown Crossing is one of those people I've been shooting for forever. It's always great to get down there and do different photos for them. Sometimes they're really challenging. Sometimes like this, the scene just presents itself and it's awesome. Uh, I've done enough to kind of know what I'm looking for with the settings and stuff. So it was cool. I uh, really liked the way this all turned out and they were extremely happy with it. So that was fun. Um, and then after that, at the end of November, I took this rural sunset and this is about the time that things got kind of crazy with the schedule around here with 
hectic with everything going on, quarantining, whatnot. So this was great. It was a beautiful sunset. It was nice just to get out of the house away, a few minutes of peace and quiet. I uh, captured these uh, big round straw hay bales. Uh, I shot four or five different photos that night, but this is probably my favorite. And I'm always a sucker for hay bales. I don't know why. Maybe it's because back when we were kids, we'd go to my grandpa's farm and we'd help him make hay bales and pick them up and we'd move them around and play on them and everything else. He didn't do the round ones, he did the square ones, but you know, it's still all the same. So uh, I always have a, a kind of a soft spot for hay bales and when there's a great sunset with them, it's always cool to see. And then uh, the next one is this sunset here with this lake uh, uh, here in town. It's another one of those days where um, late November, early December, and this one was actually December 2nd, um, there's just days in, in late fall, early winter where you can tell it's going to be a great sunset. And uh, I was leaving work, I looked at the sky, and I'm like, oh, I've got to get, get somewhere quick. And luckily I know this little lake on the way home where I could just shoot right in spend 10 minutes there taking photos and then get home without even being missed. So uh, I think it was Taco Tuesday, which, you know, we get home, we eat tacos, and uh, it was, uh, didn't take any any time out of my schedule to go do this, so. And then the next one was actually uh, Christmas Eve. When I was out, I was supposed to be shooting um, a picture for someone and woke up and the fog was thick. Just, I mean, you couldn't see more than two blocks. So I went down to where I was supposed to be taking the photo and it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't gonna happen. So then I went over to Lake Manoa, found a couple cool scenes. Uh, one of you probably already seen my social media, this one that I haven't posted yet. Um, just kind of cool, I, I like fog. I like photographing in the fog. It just changes things. It kind of makes more of a minimalistic photo that I really like, so it was fun. And then two days later, the day after Christmas, I went back downtown to photograph the picture I was supposed to grow up photograph. Again, this is for someone I haven't posted yet anywhere, but I'm going to show here at the end of the video. Um, it was a cool uh, sunrise. It's one of those... So, like, in, here in this picture, you see there's a little bit of pink above the skyline, and it kind of turned out for a neat photo, something different. But if you could have turned around 180 degrees and seen this, the sunrise that was going on behind me that was lighting up everything else, it was just, it was a phenomenal sunrise. But just, you know, I had I had a strict deadline on this photo. It had to be done basically that day. You know, the, the fog day was day one. I had Christmas if I wanted to go out on Christmas, but I didn't. And then the day after, and then it was due the, the Monday morning after that. So, uh, got it done. God, it all worked out perfect, uh, but if it was if I was just shooting for myself, I probably would have bailed and gone and tried to find something where I could incorporate that just you know blazing sunrise in it. And this was probably a good testament to just saying like you know sometimes you know that crazy sunrise just leave that alone and we'll look for something like this some you know smaller details that will uh, make for a really interesting photo too. So I re I'm really happy with the way this one turned out and um, I think the client did too. So uh, that is my 24 photos for this year for 2021. Uh, hope you enjoyed them all. And uh, as far as, uh, well, I wrote down here that, you know, Ansel Adams says that any 12 images in any year is a good crop. And so, you know, if I whittle this down, is there 12, portfolio worthy images in here you know if I took out all the ones I just like for some no reasons or whatever I don't know maybe maybe not it's close you know and uh, you know, the whole portfolio thing changes and there's pictures on my website that I know I just need to go get rid of uh, you know they're just not where they need to be and uh, but you know sometimes the sediment sets in and then I can't uh, get rid of them right away until I get something better so we'll see it was a good good you looking back it was a pretty good year I hope you know, leading into 2022. I hope I get out of Little Barn 22. Um, I'd like to do a few more on location videos. You know, I did the Badlands one this year. I tried to do a crane one. It just kind of, it was too choppy. It didn't come together. So um, I already have a crane trip booked. Hopefully get a, a, a on location video with that. And then I'd like to do another photography trip somewhere this year. Do a on location video for that. And then hopefully a few location on location um, local videos. I did do one with the uh, pedestrian bridge when it was all in pink and it just, I don't know, it just never came together and 
I don't know that some of the video quality wasn't there so I don't know I might look at it one more time and see if I can get it if I don't I'm gonna post a picture out on social media if not I'll post the video first but uh, as far as other things that I'm looking forward to in um, 22 um, Hopefully a few more sporting events, you know, a lot of them are still kind of getting going at the beginning of 2021. Hopefully, you know, I do some hockey and basketball coming up here uh, in the next couple months. Hopefully get back to the College World Series this summer, we'll see. And then, um, you know, get back at, I've been in a fall photography trip since 2018 now. So I really want to get forward to looking, really want to get back to doing that again. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, a few other goals I have for uh, 22. Um, I need to update my website, uh, not the, the website itself, but just some of the pictures. Like I said, I need, there's some older pictures on there that aren't that good that I need to get rid of. I have some new stuff that's not on there that really needs to get on there, so work on that. Uh, personally, I need to get in shape. These last couple months have been rough. Um, you know, I've been kind of stuck at home and I've kind of been... I don't want to say down in the dumps, but I've just kind of been lazy. It's just like, you know, I'm here, or I don't want to go anywhere, I don't want to get on the treadmill that's sitting right here. Um, so in, in 22, I really need to get in shape back to, you know, if I'm going to go on some longer hikes, and some photo trips or something, I really need to get in better shape. And then I just really need to get um, more organized. Um, you can't see it right out of the camera here is kind of all my chargers and wires and cables and whatever it's a big pile i have big ideas someday i'll get to that uh and then on the computer i need to get um, just some more backing up uh you know i have a whole great system for backing up my files but the camera filled up the card filled up because i haven't backed that up and i just need to stay on top of that type of stuff so uh a little more organized in 22 that's my plan um but I, uh, I thank you all for following me along in 2021. We got uh, eight minutes till midnight, so I'm gonna grab my uh, Imperial Coffee Walrus. I'm gonna go outside and watch the neighbors blow up the neighborhood for two or three minutes, and I'm gonna come back down here and download the images on the computer. So thanks again, everyone. Hope you have a great new year. Uh, looking forward to 2022, and uh, happy new year, and we'll see you on the next one.